This video is going to cover the Nick Socks combo for absolute beginners. Uh, we're going to quickly go over the deck list, talk about why some of the cards are included. Um, this is just one version of the deck, but it does include most of the core elements. After that, I'm going to showcase the two most common ways that this deck pulls off the one turn kill, uh, called an OTK for short. Um, this is uh, not every way that this deck can OTK. It's not every combo that exists in the deck. But I do see often people say, hey, I want to pick up Nixox combo, but I don't know where to start. Or maybe they say things like, you know, I know that it combos at 13 Magicka, but I really wish somebody would just spell it out for me. Um, that's what this is going to do. So again, we're going to go over the deck list. Uh, then I'm going to show you how to do it at 13 Magicka, how to do it at 15 Magicka. And then at the end of the video, I'll talk about some like quick hitter combos, things to watch out for if you're a beginner. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the deck list. Um, right out of the gate, there are a lot of control tools. Uh, that's because in order to pull off the combo, you have to survive long enough to do it. So you're going to see things like Firebolt, Fighters Guilds Recruits, Harpies, Negations, Black Hand Messenger is a fantastic stall tool, uh, Reverberating Strike, Sanctuary Pet. All of these cards are designed to stall until you can get your combo pieces off, get into the late game. Similarly, uh, there are cards like Scouts Report, Thieves Guild Recruit, and Doral Mastermind. Down here is Merchant's Camel. These help you dig through your deck so that you can find your combo pieces. Uh, there are also cards like Tree Minder uh, and down below Thorn Hist Mage, uh, Blackwood Distiller. These cards allow you to ramp up your Magicka so that you can pull off the combo faster. The faster you can get to your 13 uh, Magicka mark, for example, is uh, that much faster that you can potentially do the combo. Uh, again, Ice Storm, Defensive Tool. Uh, then there are the combo pieces themselves. Uh, a Knight to Remember, there's one copy in here, and that's because you need it if you do the 15 Magicka version, which I'll cover later in the video. Dark Rebirth is in here because you need it for the 13 Magicka version. Also, it just generates an awful lot of value uh, in general because you can use it on things like Black Hand Messenger um, or things like Nixox, uh, Genius Path Mage, etc., etc. Uh, Doppelganger is in here because there are a lot of really, really good high-value creatures. This lets you copy it, but also if you play a Nixox and then you have a bunch of Doppelgangers in your hand, you can just flood the board with five fives because each Nixox returns five Magicka. Doppelganger costs five, so it's a very easy like, oh, hey, I can do this. Um, it also lets you copy things like Uncano, Odavang. Uh, even just copying something like uh, Path Mage or Necromancer can go a long way. Um, for example, if you play Path Mage when you have 11 Magicka and it finds you Doppelganger into Doppelganger into Doppelganger, you can keep copying your Path Mage. Um, the only time that chain gets broken is if you find Sun and Shadow or Thorana. By the way, Sun and Shadow is in here to help you find combo pieces um, or against aggressive decks. Maybe you need to find that Ice Storm or something to buy you time. Uh, Thorana is in here. Um, mostly because you want to make zero cost uprisings, though sometimes even just Dark Rebirths or things like that are really important. Uh, lastly, we do have Nixox because it's required for the combo. Laneth required for the combo. Experiments is both high value and also required for the combo. Uh, Odaving is a fantastic defensive tool, and sometimes it can help you lock out a game. As I said, there's a lot of ways to re-trigger summon effects. So if you land an Odaving against aggressive decks, uh, you can essentially keep re-triggering it, uh, locking your opponent out of the game. And that's kind of the gist of the deck. Uh, the deck does also run Territorial Viper because you need a charge creature and Mentor's Ring so that you can give all of your creatures charge. That's what makes this deck become a one turn kill deck because you're, uh, when you pull the combo off, going to flood the board with big creatures and then make them all attack in one turn. Um, my particular list does not include Giant Bat. However, if you really like also having Drain as an option, you could include one Giant Bat in your list as well. And then as you're doing the combo, you either find Viper or Bat. Um, either is fine. Um, but that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, the other card worth mentioning is Necromancer. Necromancer essentially either lets you keep finding your ramp cards to get up there faster. Thorn Hist Mage, for example, great. Um, let you keep bringing back your defensive tools 
bringing back viper is like removal same thing with sanctuary pet or harpy if you need to shackle um, it can bring back black hand messenger to help you stall and gain some health um, essentially necromancer lets you bring back a, a number of fantastic things so necromancer is there uh, basically for utility right um, generating just extra value from all of your early game stall and or ramp tools uh, so that is the list in a nutshell uh, as i said this is pretty standard you may see other lists that run uh, a couple of things that are different you know one or two cards here or there some include lightning bolts and less uh, reverberating strikes some do include one giant bat but most of the Nixox decks are very, very similar to this. Um, you will notice there is no Red Brahmin. That's one of the cards I get asked about the most. Uh, that's simply because it costs nine, and you cannot have cards that compete with Laness because when you play your Genius Pass Mage, you have to guarantee that you hit Laness. So Red Brahmin is great. It's a good tool, but in the Nixox combo version of Telvanni, you do not want to include him because you have to find Laness to do your one-turn kill. So uh, that's the deck list. Now we're gonna transition to where I do a walkthrough of the 13 Magicka combo so that you can kind of see how it works step by step. Uh, again, this is designed for beginners, um, so hopefully this helps. Now when people talk about the Nixox combo, they are typically referring to the one that you trigger when you have 13 Magicka. Now that's what I'm gonna show you first. Uh, as you can see right now, I'm against the computer. Uh, I'm doing it this way because uh, this is a combo that typically, when you're trying to do it throughout the course of a normal game, uh, you end up kind of racing the turn timer. And if you're a new player who's trying this out, you're definitely going to be racing against the turn timer. You'll probably not be able to complete the combo all the way through uh, your first couple times trying it out. So to kind of walk you through this step by step, we're doing it again against the AI. No turn timers involved. Um, yeah, to do this, there are some conditions that you need to meet. Uh, this is a guaranteed combo, meaning you can get this off 100% of the time. If you have 13 Magicka, you have a Genius Path Mage in hand, you have a Dark Rebirth in hand, and then in your deck, so this is the other part, in your deck you have to have uh, Ulfric's Uprising, Laneth, and at least two Nyxoxes and one Devaith's Experiments. Now, here against the AI, uh, I have played some cards uh, a little bit, just kind of setting this up, but you'll notice I've only played one Uprising, so there are two left, that's great. Uh, there's one Nyxox here, but that means there are two in the deck. Again, that's great. Uh, we have Rebirth, we have Path Mage, Laneth is in the deck. Uh, everything is good to go. So, when you have 13 Magicka, uh, you're going to start by playing Genius Path Mage. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Genius Path Mage is going to find Nixox. Uh, it's the only card that costs right seven in the deck. And so it finds you a Nixox. Now, this means that when Nixox enters play, you go up to 12. So you had 13. You go down six, so you have seven, which summons the Ox. Ox comes into play, puts you at 12. 12 is really important because you're going to play card number two in the combo. Card number two is Dark Rebirth, and we're going to play it on Genius Path Mage. Genius Path Mage is going to find Laneth. This is why it's really important that Laneth is in your deck, not in your hand. If she's in your hand, Path Mage will not only not find her, but it means you have to hard cast her or play her from your hand later on, and that can be troublesome. So we're going to go ahead and play Dark Rebirth on Genius Path Mage. Laneth enters play. There's always a way. And then and we get to I search for a card. Now, the first time that you search with Laneth in this combo, you go find Ulfric's Uprising. And it's really important you get Uprising first. Now, eventually, we're going to play Devase Experiments. That's why it's important that that is also in your deck uh, at, at some point. Now, if Experiments is in your hand, makes it that much easier. If you already have Uprising in your hand right now, you can skip and find an experiment, and then you can just play the Uprising in your hand. But this is assuming you have no other combo pieces in your hand, you go find Uprising. So, we're going to go ahead and pick Uprising, and hit OK. And again, we're just, we're going to play through this as if uh, these were the only combo pieces we had. So, 
Uh, now we're going to play Uprising. Uprising is going to cost seven, which is going to take us down to two. But then because of the way that the uh, effects are going to trigger, because of the order, Ox is going to trigger from the Uprising first. So even though we go down to two, we go back up to seven. And then when Path Mage triggers, it will find the other Nyx Ox in our deck. And that's really important because that's also going to give us even more Magicka. And it's going to set us up for the experiments play on the following turn. Um, so we're going to go ahead and play the Uprising now. So again, order is have 13 Magicka. Play Path Mage. Play Dark Rebirth on your Path Mage. Find Ulfric's Uprising. And then now we're going to go ahead and play Uprising. So again, at this point, because of the way things work, this gave us the Magicka, Path Mage triggered, which found us another Nyx Axe. So we were going to go ahead and find uh, Devaith's Experiments at this point. Uh, if you have other stuff on the board, there's a reason I left this Black Hand Messenger here. Uh, when you play this Uprising, you're going to have to resolve those triggers. Now, I, I say that because... As you're going through this combo, if you have a bunch of other things, let's say you have Merchant's Camel, which is in my hand, for example, in play, you'll have to resolve those effects too. So you'll want to get to a point where you can like quickly trigger those if you're racing against the turn timer. Um, that can be a problem. If you have a board full of stuff, you're going to have to resolve every one of those triggers for each one of the uprisings that you play. So keep that in mind. Now... Uh, we went and we found experiments. Um, when this came into play, that also popped us up to 12, which means we now have enough to play the experiments. That's important. And in this situation, we're going to have enough left over that we can play the second uprising. So uh, combo, again, is going to be uprising, of uh, experiments, uprising. So um, walking it through, path mage. When you're at 13, Dark Rebirth, on your Path Mage, find Laneth. Laneth finds Uprising. You play Uprising number one. Now we play Experiments, and then when you uh, go to finish this, you're going to play a second Uprising. But the reason that you do the Experiments before the second Uprising is because you need Laneth to go find you two cards, and that means you need to have two copies of Laneth in play in order for that to happen. So, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to play Experiments on our Laneth. And again, this time we're going to go find another Uprising always a way, and as I she enters play. So here's the Uprising. And then we're going to go ahead, in this case, uh, we're going to sacrifice our Black Hand Messenger for the Betray. If you do have things that are on the board, you want to get rid of the things that will cause additional triggers for your second uprising because again you have to resolve them so if i get rid of my black hand messenger here i don't have to worry about picking something to do two damage to when i play that other uprising it's all about time management time conservation so we're going to go ahead and get rid of this uh, another good target to sometimes get rid of is genius path mage believe it or not because when you play your second uprising this is also going to trigger again and it's going to put more creatures on the board. You may have to resolve those triggers. Another reason sometimes it's good to overwrite or uh, to sacrifice your path mage is if it starts making sweet rolls when you go to play more creatures, it means that you're going to have to find targets uh, to sacrifice. That takes time as well. Again, when you're doing this combo, uh, a lot of times it's about time management. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this. And now, we've already copied Laneth, we have two of those on the board, but we need to make sure we have enough Magicka to play our second Uprising. So, we're going to target an Ox, because that will give us more Magicka, allowing us to then play the Uprising that we just went to get. Now, this time around, we're going to go ahead and Uprising again. Now, uh, assuming that you're not already possessing these cards in your hand, you have to go find something that charges. This is either a Territorial Viper or a Giant Bat. If your deck list runs Giant Bat, some people like to run it. I currently do not in my version. Um, but you have to find a Viper and or Bat, something that charges, and you have to find Mentor's Ring. Now, again, time management. When you are doing this, believe it or not, there is a correct order for what you want to choose. What you want to choose 
first is whatever it is that charges, whatever the creature is that charges. And in this case, that's Territorial Viper. Now, why does that matter? Well, you're going to see that when I pick this, there's going to be a drawing animation, right, where the creature is being drawn. So if I do this fast, I pick Viper, and then I go and I also pick Mentor's Ring as my second one, it will not let me play the charge creature if I picked that second until the draw animation is all the way done. And you want to be able to slam it onto the board as fast as possible when you're racing the turn timer. So if you pick Mentor's Ring first, you have to wait till both draw animations are done in order to put the Viper on the board. Whereas if you pick this Viper first, you can play that while the draw animation is going for the second card for the Mentor's Ring. And you'll see that in a moment. So we're going to go ahead and pick the Viper here. And then we're going to go ahead and pick the Mentor's Ring. Now, see, Viper's already in my hand. So because I'm drawing Mentor's Ring, I can throw that Viper on the board while this is still being drawn. If I had done that in a different order, if I would have picked the Viper second, I would have had to wait all the way for the draw animation to finish. Is it a small fraction of a second? Yes. Does it matter? Yeah, actually, sometimes it does. Now, if you have other effects in your hand, for example, you can choose to play those just as insurance. You'll notice, for example, I have a doppelganger here. If I want, I could doppelganger on this Nixox, overwrite this. I could doppelganger on this Laneth to go find something else as insurance. But as you're learning this combo for the first time, because again, this video is geared towards beginners, um, you're a lot of times not going to have time for all that extra stuff. So once you get your Viper and your Mentor's Ring, uh, after this, you just play the Mentor's Ring on the Viper and then you start attacking. So again, I know I've done it a few times here. I'm sorry if this sounds really redundant, but I want to hammer this home. Uh, 13 Magicka, Path Mage, Dark Rebirth on your Path Mage. When that finds Laneth, you get Uprising and play it. Then you play Devaith's Experiments, copying Laneth and a Nixox. Then you play a second Uprising, you find a Charge Creature and your Mentor's Ring, and then you attack. Now, the last part that I want to mention is when you go to the part where you are attacking, there are some things that you can like learn, if you will, about uh, this process. So, um, one, if you hit a prophecy and you have your, your turn timer coming down, right? So again, we're gonna see AI right now. There's no turn timer. But if you are starting to attack and your turn timer, you can see the little rope thing burning and it's like halfway and then it suddenly stops and you know you have not dragged enough creatures for it to kill them. So let's say uh, it's like halfway through, I drag the Viper, I drag Laneth, and then this thing goes away and I've only done, you know, 10 damage essentially at that point. You know you've hit a prophecy. Your opponent is going to be able to respond to you. And that's important because that means you need to be on your toes and ready to go because the minute they pick a target or and uh, like resolve that prophecy, you got to start dragging creatures again to attack. So if you know you have not done enough damage to kill them, be ready to go when that prophecy resolves. Uh, the second is after you have dragged enough to kill them, even if there is no prophecies, right? So uh, if I go 4, 10, 20, 30, right? So that would be 30 with everything that I can attack with through the Path Mage. You'll notice that you will not be able to attack with the next creature. That means you've done enough damage. Um, you're just waiting for the animations to resolve. So keeping track of how much damage you have like sent at your opponent does matter. Because uh, if for whatever reason it stops letting you drag creatures, if it stops letting you select targets, then there's a reason for that. And again, we're going to showcase that here in a minute, but I wanted to uh, say it up front before I do the combo. Uh, the last thing I want to point out is that once you play the Mentor's Ring, you can start dragging stuff even before the animation resolves. You do not have to wait for the full animation to go. You can do it the moment the Mentor's Ring hits. So we're going to go Mentor's Ring here, drag, and then I'm going to just start grabbing. So interestingly enough i cannot grab this so we are hitting a prophecy right this is what i talked about uh, even though we don't have the little turn timer interrupting it won't let me take actions so this laneth is going to hit a prophecy there's the prophecy now the minute it resolves i got to be ready to go because again you got to imagine that you're fighting a turn timer 
So you just start dragging again, and then at this point, I've done enough damage so this Nyx Ox does not trigger, right? It won't let me drag that, but that's okay because that's due to death. So uh, again, as you're dragging, if it stops letting you do things, be ready to go. That means your opponent hit a prophecy unless you have done enough damage to kill them, in which case that's normal. It's just waiting on animations to finish. Uh, that is the 13 Magicka combo. Uh, now I'm going to show you the other most common way to trigger it, and this occurs at 15 Magicka. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. So the second most common way that you pull off the single turn OTK combo with the Nyxox combo deck is by getting to 15 Magicka. And you can do this through ramping, you can also use the ring to help you get there, or in the case of the example I'm about to use, you can get there using uh, Blackwood Distiller as well. Uh, specifically, the Pilfer gives three Magicka, and that can help you get to your combo faster. Uh, Blackwood Distiller can do the same thing when you're trying to get to the 13 Magicka combo, but in this instance, um, we're going to showcase the 15 Magicka one. Now, when you're at 15 Magicka, what you need in order to pull the combo off is a Genius Path Mage in hand, and then you need either Devase Experiments or Dark Rebirth. Um, in this instance, we have Devase Experiments. I'll quickly mention where you would use Dark Rebirth if you were going to do the other one, just so that you kind of understand both. But uh, that's what you need. You also need to have Laneth in your deck, and you need to have a Knight to Remember in your deck as well. So uh, we're going to pretend like this Nyxox isn't in our hand for the purposes of this combo because I want to showcase how it would function if you just had the bare minimum. So again, 15 Magicka, Genius Path Mage, and then either Devase Experiments or Dark Rebirth uh, with Laneth and a Knight to Remember in your deck. So first, let's just go ahead and get ourselves to 15 Magicka. So as I said, uh, Blackwood Distiller is a great way to help you get there a little bit faster. That is why I run them in my deck. Uh, so once you're at 15, we're right gonna go ahead and play Genius Path Mage. Genius Path Mage will it. then find Laneth. Now, um, in the case of uh, trying to pull this off, we're going to go ahead and grab a Knight to Remember. When you have 15 Magicka, the first thing you want to pull is a Knight to Remember. And the reason for that is, is because you're trying to pull a Nyxox from your deck. Now, I know I have the one in my hand, but again, for the, the sake of showcasing how this functions, if you have nothing else going on, we're going to grab a Knight to Remember, right? So the reason you grab a Knight to Remember first is you're going to play it on the Path Mage, and you have to make sure you have room over here for the Path Mage to pop over. And this will find Nyxox from the deck. That then pops you back to 12. Now, here is where you play uh, your other combo piece. As I said, Dark Rebirth works, Devase Experiments works. If you had Dark Rebirth, you would play Dark Rebirth on Laneth. And then you would go find Ulfric's Uprising. And then from there, you would combo the same way as you would if you were going through the 13 Magicka one. So you would have nine Magicka left over once you'd played Dark Rebirth on Laneth. You would find Ulfric's Uprising. You would play Uprising at that point, and with the board state the way that it is, uh, you would go down to two Magicka, but then this would pop you back up, and this would allow you to go find something else as well, and you could kind of continue the chain. But... In this instance, we already have Devase Experiments in hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and copy Laneth and copy our Nyxox. So first we copy Laneth. And in this instance, we're going to go find Ulfric's Uprising. There's always a way, and I can always find it. Because we're going to need that to continue the chain. And then uh, let's go ahead and get rid of our Black Hand Messenger because we don't want to have to pick targets, right? Um, again, for a, a time management standpoint, you want to get rid of stuff that it's going to require you to do more later. Um, second one, you hit Nyxox because you need the Magicka in order to play your Uprising. And then, just like with the 13 Magicka combo, at this point, um, you're just trying to get to where you have enough stuff on the board to uh, OTK. So, Uprising here. You're going to get a bunch of Magicka from your Oxes. You're going to get to go find two cards. 
Um, if you were just trying to go ahead and attack uh, for lethal at this point, you would be going to find your Viper and your Mentor's Ring. However, you will notice that on the board, if we were to do that, we actually don't have enough in order to make that happen. And this does happen sometimes, right? So they're at 30, and if we went and got a Viper, the Viper plus one Lioness would be 10, this would be 16, this would be 26. This, because of a Knight to Remember, cannot attack. That's not enough to OTK them. So, uh, what you would want to do in order to pull this off is you actually want to do another cycle or another round of Ulfric's Uprisings. So these are going to find two cards. We're going to go find a Nyxox, again, pretending like we don't already have this one in hand. So we'll go find a Nyxox with our first one. We'll go find another Uprising with our second one so that uh, we can do that. And then we're going to go ahead and play Nyxox. And then we're going to play Uprising again. And this will, again, now allow us to go find two more cards. So what you do is you go find your Viper and your Mentor's Ring. And as I said during the 13 Magicka one, you always want to pick the Viper first. Or if you run Bat, Bat is fine. And then the Mentor's Ring second, because if you're racing the turn timer, you want to be able to play this while the other one's being drawn. This will go ahead and overwrite this. I apologize, that was not supposed to grab that. We were supposed to hit OK for the sacrifice. And then we're going to go ahead and play our Mentor's Ring here. Because now we'll have enough. Because we got the extra Nyxox. So as all of these pop up, we're going to have 5, 10, 20, 31. Now if you wanted extra insurance, because we had a third Ulfrex Uprising in there, you could theoretically have went and got a third Uprising to grab Doppelgangers and you could have overwrote your Path Mage with one Doppelganger copying a Nexox. You could have overwrote your Distiller with a second one and then swung. Uh, this is one of those things where as a new player, once you have enough to go for lethal, you should probably do it. You don't want to take extra steps if you don't have to because you don't want to uh, risk running out of turn timer. Right now, I'm against the AI so that we can kind of go over this and go slow and teach, so it kind of doesn't matter. Um, as you get more experienced with the deck, recognizing, hey, I might need a little bit more, because if we had a prophecy here, it's going to not OTK them, right? So we're going to go ahead and start swinging because we do have enough. Hope for no prophecies. And this the good news is, if you did hit a prophecy here, it would typically not be enough to, to swing the game in in their favor, right? Like we have all this on the board. We have a semi-comfortable health total. Like that would be enough to win. Um, but knowing when, hey, a prophecy might interrupt this and I have another uprising so I could overwrite these creatures, knowing those things as you get more comfortable with the deck is really important. Um, but this was the, the 15 magic a combo, uh, as I said. So again, just walking through it here real quick. Uh, you wanna have 15 magicka. And you want to have Lyoneth and a Knight to remember in the deck. And then you need either Dark Rebirth or Devase Experiments. In this case, we had Devase Experiments already in hand. Um, you play your Path Mage to find Lyoneth. Lyoneth finds a Knight to remember, which you play on the Path Mage. Because that will find you a Nyxox. And then from there, you just go through your normal steps to do the combo. Um, so that's 13 Magicka and 15 Magicka. I'm going to take a little bit longer to just kind of go back through the deck list and talk about some additional combos that are good to uh, remember. Not anything super complex, but just like quick things to remember as you pilot the deck that I think are really helpful. So let's go ahead and take uh, one more look at the deck list and just talk about some of the easy things uh, that are good to remember. Okay, so now that we've seen the combo uh, in action a couple of times, I just want to point out some other things that you want to remember. Uh, as you are playing the deck because while it is nice to just get the combo and go off um, it doesn't happen every time in practice uh, there's a lot of things that you kind of have to remember in terms of um, getting yourself to the combo and coming up with creative ways to pull it off so uh, first and foremost I want to talk about a night to remember and dark rebirth uh, these are cards that if you have a Nyxox on the board can represent additional ramps. So if you have multiple Dark Rebirths in hand, 
and let's say you're at less than 13 Magicka, um, but you do have a Nyxox on the board, you can use Dark Rebirth on your Nyxox, or you can use a Knight to Remember on your Nyxox in order to jump yourself up to 13 Magicka to pull that combo off, or just jump yourself up to pull off other combos. So Dark Rebirth on a Nyxox is essentially giving yourself two more Magicka. Um, if you have ever played blackjack or done any sort of card counting, things like that, you can uh, think of it as like plus two, a knight to remember is plus three, right? So if you have a Nyxox on the board, Dark Rebirth is a plus two, a knight to remember is a plus three. Um, again, this mostly matters when you're trying to get yourself, you know, up to a, a certain magic a number. Um, sometimes, however, it's not just to pull off the OTK. Sometimes you want to get yourself up to a certain magic and number because you're trying to find something specifically with Genius Path Mage. And that's where I want to talk about something else real quick. So Genius Path Mage uh, finds a certain number of things in this deck very specifically. So at 7, it will uh, only find Nyxox. So if you have 13 Magicka, and that's why the combo works, it will only ever find Nyxox. But at 14 Magicka, it'll find Uncano every time. 15, it always finds Laneth. And though it sounds kind of crazy, uh, if you ever get yourself to 18, you will always find Odaving. Um, now, that being said, sometimes you play Path Mages before your combo goes off because you're just trying to tutor things. Um, and the Path Mages stay on the board. So like one common uh, combo, if you will, is playing Path Mage when you are at 12 Magicka. If you're exactly at 12, Path Mage is either going to find another Necromancer or your other Path Mages. Um, sometimes that's just good enough. If you play a Path Mage that finds a Path Mage that finds a Path Mage that finds a Necromancer, that's a big board flood and you can really turn the tide of a game. So if you do that and your Path Mage sticks around uh, and you get to the point where you have, let's say, like 14 Magicka, playing a Knight to Remember on your Path Mage always finds Odaving. If you have 15 Magicka, it's the same thing, but with Dark Rebirth. Dark Rebirth on a Path Mage, when you have 15 Magicka, always finds Odaving. So while 13 Magicka and 15 Magicka help you pull off combos from hand, sometimes you have played Nyxox or you have played Path Mage before you've done the OTK and they're just on the board and you can do some silly combos with them with those other cards. Uh, another thing that I want to point out is that uh, this deck does run Therana and Therana can enable some really interesting things as well. Um, first and foremost, Ulfric's Uprising. If you have Therana on the board and you play Ulfric's Uprising, it shuffles in zero cost versions of Uprising which can allow you to just generate insane value if you draw them. Uh, even more importantly, if you ever get to the point where you have both Therana and Laneth on the board, and you play Ulfric's Uprising, you can essentially just play Uprisings forever. And that matters because sometimes you have things like Necromancer on the board, and you can just keep reviving creatures to dig through your deck. Or you can keep reviving... Um, stuff like Territorial Viper and clear out your enemy board. Uh, if you have Encano on the board and Laneth and Therana, then you can just use Encano to shoot somebody in the face over and over and over again. Uh, speaking of which, Encano is another one of your win conditions. If you don't pull off the OTK or maybe you draw too many of your pieces, um, you can play Encano and usually use him to remove a creature or something. But if he sticks, if he stays on the board, uh, you've got a lot of things going in your favor at that point because there is doppelgangers, there is dark rebirths, a night to remember, Ulfric's uprising. It is not uncommon for you to use Encano to burst for 20 plus damage in a turn between summon effect triggers and attacking with him and so on and so forth. So um, Encano is definitely a big win condition, uh, even further with the base experiments. If you have experiments, um, and you copy Encano twice, that's two more shots with him at things on the board. And then if you have an Uprising because you have a lot of Magicka, or maybe you got one of those zero cost ones from a Therana, um, that's a lot of burst there as well. So Encano uh, seems just like, hey, you include him because you're playing blue, and so you always include Encano. But the truth is, uh, he is a key cog in an alternative uh, series of win conditions for you as well. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about just real quick uh, in terms of like 
combos to look out for uh, is Black Hand Messenger. Um, sometimes with this deck, specifically against aggressive decks, you don't win by OTKing, you just win by controlling the board. You win by not losing. I know that sounds silly, um, but sometimes just not dying is the right path. So don't be afraid to use your combo pieces on Black Hand Messenger specifically if it means not dying. Um, using Darker Birth on Messenger is a lot of life gain because of the drain, because of the last gasp, things like that. Um, using things like Ulfric's Uprising when you have one or two Black Hand Messengers on the board can really go a long way for keeping things under control, getting that drain going. Um, using Mentor's Ring, if you're not in a position where you think that you have to OTK but you're just trying to survive, Mentor's Ring on a Black Hand Messenger when you've got other creatures on the board can really turn the tide against an aggressive deck. Um, even DeVace Experiments, if you have one Black Hand Messenger but you use DeVace Experiments to copy it, you, you do two damage, so you drain two. Then you can use the sacrifice from the experiments on one of your messengers, which will trigger a last gasp, gain you two, copy it, do two damage of something, gain you two. So if you remove one or two threats from the board and gain six, I know it sounds silly, but sometimes that's just good enough with your device experiments. Again, against aggressive decks, uh, the OTK is cool, but you just want to not die. So don't be afraid to do that. Um, Again, these are just beginner's tips. There are insane things that this deck can do. This is a very high skill cap deck. Uh, every game feels like an algebra problem. You're like playing Legends and Sudoku at the same time. Um, if you're looking for people who are really good at this, please don't hack me. The person who won the Master Series is phenomenal with the deck. You can watch him stream if you really want to learn some interesting ways to pilot or play this. Um, there are other fantastic content creators that play this deck periodically as well. So if you have questions, you know, hop in, say, hey, I'm having trouble with this, or what are some things I might be missing, or just, just watch and soak it in. You may see them do something that you hadn't considered yourself. So uh, again, these are just beginner's tips, beginner's combos, things like that that I wanted to point out. Uh, the most common one being the 13, second most common combo for the OTK being the 15. I see a lot of questions about it. Wanted to do a quick walkthrough of both. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this helped you if you fall into that camp. And as always, thanks for watching. And until next time, may you walk on warm sands.